Hi, Gaz Williams here. Uh, this is a follow-up video to my first look at the new Korg iOS app, or iPad app specifically, Gadget. And in that first look, it was literally just after it was released and it was the first look, uh, prodding around, looking at buttons. Now I've had another a chance to have another look at it. Um, I thought I'd do a little follow-up video with some of my thoughts and some of the things that I've discovered. Um, so here's a song I just I just done in the last sort of 20 minutes or so uh, called Tongued Shadaha. That's one of the automatic titling uh, things that the, that's built into the app, which I really do like. I really like that. So anyway, I play Tongued Shadaha and we'll have a listen and watch what happens. Okay, so <laughs> uh, that was to demonstrate really the, the way that the sequencer works. And it's a little bit unusual in that it's moving from top down. It's a little bit like a tracker or something like that. Um, uh, or Ableton Live setting the scenes to play for certain lengths. So the way that you do that in Gadget is that each scene so these coming down in horizontal strips are the scenes. Uh, each scene will automatically, once it's played the longest of the tracks, it'll move to the next scene. So what I mean by that, each of the tracks can be playing any length, like one track. Well, in this case, we can see that um, tracks three, four and five, which are actually blank, are just essentially one bar long. Track one is one bar long, but track two is two bars long. So when we play that scene, it won't move to the second scene until it's played the two bars. Now, there is a loop function, and if I hit the loop and played it, then it will just stay on the one scene, so you can prepare your scene without it changing. It'll just loop. So, so that's kind of how, you know, so, so you can think ahead a little bit. You can think, well, actually, I want this intro to play around, maybe I want it to play around um, four times or two times. So the way you do that, you hit a little function bottom, button in the bottom. And in the top corner here, we can set how many repeats of the whole scene that we want it to do. So here, I'll just put it to repeat the scene twice. So now this will play the scene twice, the longest track being two bars, the scene playing twice means it will play for four bars. And let's take the loop off and let's see. Two bars, three bars, four bars, and change. So that way you can make your arrangement. Um, so if I decided though that I wanted the 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 scene at the beginning to play but i wanted like a variation to come in and uh, what i could do is i could duplicate so i could come into here and i could duplicate that first scene into the slot below and now with that duplicated i've got two identical copies so if i go back to my first one and um if i set the length to go back to just one repeat similarly with the next one just to one repeat and now maybe Let's just, uh, well, I guess the easiest thing, let's just clear the second track. Okay, so now if we start the track, if we start it from the top, so 
One thing to notice is that although I cleared the contents of track two, because track two is still set to being two bars long, the the scenes that still even though i cleared it and was empty it still dictated how long that scene was i.e two bars so if i wanted that first scene only just to play one bar i would have to go in to the that particular blank one function length take it down to one bar which seems a little bit silly i think it'd be good to be able to just completely delete it you might be able to i just uh, i didn't see that okay now, what I can also do is say I wanted to move one of those, I wanted to rearrange the order of the scenes, then without going into that function, you just click, press and hold on to a part and you can just drag it and drop it anywhere you want. So that's how you arrange your different scenes. So you can see how you can build things up into a, into a whole song. Now, um, Here's something I discovered earlier that, again, it's not particularly obvious, but let's go into into this scene now. Uh, I'm going to just take it back to the top and let's go into this drum pattern. So at the moment, just one bar. Now, if I wanted to make this scene two bars, well, let's just make it four bars for good measure. So I click function at the bottom there and I increase the bar to four bars. Okay, now if we tap on these here, we can see that all those four bars, uh, the sorry, bars two to four are currently empty. So how do we duplicate the pattern? Well, I guess I could go select, drag it all like this, and then what do I do? Well, that's not the way to do it. Um, so you go function and you hit copy, and now copy, it says select source. Well, the source is bar one, select destination. Well, I'm gonna, I could select bar two, but I've noticed you can just press all three. Um, the way automations are carried out is pretty cool. So we'll have a little look at that. If we wanted to automate um, a parameter of a synthesizer, for instance, then um, let's just solo and cycle this intro pattern here. So that synth, maybe we wanted to put some, some automation on it. I'll go into that part there. And in fact, actually, there is already automation on here. Um, and you just simply drop into record and then you can adjust any parameter. And we can see that parameter there. I just touched the release parameter and that started to automate. Now, let's just stop the track. It and then I could go peak and I wanted to make say I wanted to make this jump in the middle here a bit smooth oh but we can see that I'm only able to adjust the uh, to adjust the parameter at the the grid value which is doesn't allow you to, to do a very smooth curve well there is a way to do it but it's not particularly obvious you hit function you go back to length again and now this is where you get to set the grid so if I was just to tap all the way over to the left, the grid is then off. And it does allow me to zoom here. If I pinch and two pinch in the ruler at the top there, just underneath where the bars are. And now with the grid off, I can go in there and I can make very smooth edits. So let's just go and edit this little bit here. And we can just make it much smoother, like so. Okay, double tap on the bar at the top and you zoom out to the whole bar. Double, um, yeah, double tap on a bar will jump it to the next bar. Okay, so we can play that then as it plays through. So it's, I don't know what the limit of uh, automated tracks is, are, but um, 
I didn't run out. I mean, on one, I think I managed about eight different automation lanes. So it's quite nice and easy to navigate those automation lanes, being as they, they stack up neat along the edge there. Okay, so um, I think that's pretty much all we'll look at this time, but hope there were some useful little tips and tricks in there. And this is a very, very cool piece of software. Okay, Gaz Williams, over and out.